Here we go again. It's time to go. Not so great a podcast. This is E. And about to discuss the NXT Tuesday night event. It's gonna be quick. Hopefully, maybe like less than maybe 10 minutes. Maybe I'll break a record today. Subscribe YouTube B 24G exclamation point. Twitter Eric G2477. For now, follow up. Hey, good evening. And thanks for listening. For anybody out there who listens, I greatly appreciate it. We're going to cover NXT. I did a raw podcast and um, I'm, I'm quiet because I'm trying to think of what I'm going to say. NXT show tonight was better than raw. I said it a couple of episodes back, you know, a couple of the podcasts back. NXT is growing on me. It's a great show. Shawn Michaels is doing a great job down there with it. It's a team effort. The talent down there is amazing. And as we have seen lately, Tiffany Stratton at SmackDown, Braun Breaker basically still a free agent at this point. The Wolf Dogs, come on, come on. I mean, come on. How do you not like that? How do you not like that name? There's those moments where you have two completely different types of characters, but they're similar in certain in certain ways. And it just makes magic, you know, in the camera. And... It's fun. And, you know, we all know that they're not going to be a tag team for like a long, long time. But let it ride out. You know, I'll say that to start off. I'm not going to go in any particular order with the show. I just think that they are a great team. And... In vengeance, you know, they tease each other. They did have that battle back then, you know, that uh, rivalry, and they had a great match too. A couple pay per views, like, you know, sometime last year. And they just have that. They just have it. I mean, you know, we already know about Braun. I'm a big fan of Braun. I can't wait for him to go up. It's going to suck when he goes up because. And it's not a bad thing saying, hey, he shouldn't go up. It's just that it won't be the same. It won't be the same because, of course, when you're when you're in, in developmental or the NXT, the atmosphere is different. You don't really travel the road as a lot. You do your weekly shows. You have these passionate fans who love going to the shows and it makes for good TV and they get to build character. And sometimes the character goes along with when they go to the main roster and other times it doesn't kind of gets left behind and some other gimmick is put up. Hence, you know, Butch also known as Pete Dunn. Sometimes you just want to just be yourself and go up the way you should you don't need a, a, a gimmick. So I'll start with the Wolf Dogs. And of course, they won the Dusty Cup the Tag Team Tournament. You know, Baron Corbin keeps on saying, you know, hey, I'm going to introduce, you know, I'm going to take this to, I'm taking it home with me. Either way, their name is engraved on the, on the trophy. That's the key thing. It wasn't the Wolf Dogs, as, as he officially feared before. It was Braun and uh, 
Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin. And, uh, you know, Braun said, oh, no, 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 you know what? Let her do the introduction. And the, and the announcer mentioned, you know, Baron Corbin and Braun Breaker, the Wolf Dogs. So it's, I guess it's official. Their name is the Wolf Dogs. Anybody who does merchandising, just do that. You know, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a difficult thing to do. It's an easy one. It's popular. Even though, you know, you go through social media, you read things. Braun is wearing the best uh, spear in the business t-shirt or tank top right now. Whoever does marketing or merchandising, get on, get on those because those will sell. And, uh, you know, they got their, they got their trophy celebrated. They are officially the number one contenders for the belt for Tony and Stax, who are the current tag team champions. And, uh, we'll see where it goes. You know, there was a, there was a good match earlier too. You know, the tag to be Axiom and Nathan Frazier. There's just so many ways, you know, there's so many, there's so much talent down there. At times, you know, you wish you get a talent that you need to add there because if they move someone, you need to bring someone either from up from the main roster down or get new talent into the brand. And they have a lot. They have a lot. Uh, so, you know, we'll move away from, from the Wolf Dogs for a little bit. Then, you know, the key thing was Carmelo Hayes explaining why he did what he did and basically attacking his friend at the end of Vengeance, who is Trick Williams. He mentioned to him about, you know, Trick was never on the same level. He bought into the hype. You know, he heard the fans and they thought, you know, and he mentioned his, his accolades for Carmelo Hayes saying, hey, I'm a two-time North American champion, heavyweight champion. You know, Trick was only a two-day North American champion. He kept on buying into the hype. We're not the same. We're different. He thought he was in the same level for some reason. He wasn't. He thought he was the it guy. He's not. You know, we were never on the same page. You know, all the things that talk about his accomplishments and how they're not on the same level. Basically, you know, at the end of the day, I did not want to see you win. I did not want you to match to my level. Even though Iyo Dragunov said if there was a deserving champion in his uh in his promo, he said it would have been Trick Williams because Trick Williams gave him everything he had. And it's true, that was a good match. Just unfortunate those moments, you know, when you have that, you know, your own friend or whatever gets involved. I would have been okay if if Dragunov would have uh, either won or lost, it didn't matter. Because Trick Williams right now is so over. When uh, when Carmelo was discussing his reasoning, the Trick Williams music hit, the whole crowd just got up and they're, you know, bopping, moving. And then Carmelo said, he's like, you're crazy. <laughs> you know, this is, you, really, you guys really fall for that that easily? He's not even here. He's in the hospital bed recovering from the injuries I gave him on his knee. Next to Booker T. So, you know, that was that. Then Dijak comes out, you know, saying that he deserves the next shot. He's there, so they have a match later on. Dragunov wins. All, you know, all the matches that they put up in NXT. Many times, well, I mean, we can argue this or just, you know, give our opinion just have better they're just better than the main roster of course it's two different directions and two different uh, leaderships you know basically 
cling into it and the talent and so on and so forth. And NXT is more like, a, you know, NXT kind of reminds me of a little bit. Remember back in, that, back in the day, ECW, before WWE bought them? They had great matches, great matches. And the crowd enjoyed that. And that, you know, regardless of whether it's a villain, whether it's a good guy, there's a respect level that goes with the performance because they're there to perform and they're there to give the fans everything they can do. Not saying that the main roster doesn't do that. It's a, just a little bit easier because you squeeze a lot of promos and so on and so forth. And here the matches are just what they are. They're all good. Nathan Frazier, uh, Axiom, great team they put together. You know, as far as speed, you know, acrobatics. And they, they won their match. So, you know, going to that. And then uh, the Wolf Dogs attacked them because, you know, they, even though they, they went through them in the tournament, they were an amazing threat for them. That was a great match. If anybody gets a chance, you can go to Peacock. Non-sponsored, me, me saying that. Check it out. They usually upload their episodes on Peacock for NXT. And they're good ones, too. There was a match between the Wolf Dogs versus Axiom and Nathan Frazier. That was a great, great tag team match. There were moments you thought that the Axiom and Nathan Frazier were Nathan Frazier were going to go through into the finals. Uh, the women's talent is good. You had Lola Vice, who was a mixed martial arts uh, Bellator fighter. She uh, fought against Roxanne Roxanne Perez. Roxanne Perez won. But, you know, I do like that, you know, based on what happened, the pay-per-view, it's like, you know what? We need to settle this right now. We need to get over this. They don't wait. And I love that. They could, you know, keep on pushing it back, maybe do a pay-per-view because that pay-per-view is a couple of uh, two and a half months away, but they just got right to it. You know, I didn't like the way you cashed in during my match. You basically cost me that match. And now you got to, you know, pay the price for it. And it looks like there were some stiff moments in that match. I could be wrong. I don't know. But both of them were holding their chin at the end. And it looks as if Lola Vice had something happen with her teeth. I could be wrong. But check it out. You know, from what, how the way she came in the match and the way she ended the match. It looked like something happened. The camera is not going to focus on that. But there were there was something I you could. I felt like that Roxanne Perez looked down at her, and after the match was over. And saw, but again, the camera is not going to show because I don't think it was. Of course, it's all accidental, and things happen. You know, stiff uh, shots can happen. I think I think something happened. I don't know. Correct me. If you notice that. It looked to me like there was either a kick or something that got past. And the bottom, it was like the bottom teeth, actually. Uh, try to think what else there was with this NXT. Uh, oh, I'll say this much. I can't wait to see Lash Legend get moved up. Still, you know, she's had her moments, but she's going to be a force when she goes to the main roster. You know, athletic, power, powerful. Not sure if anybody remembers or saw this, but when she picked up Otis and body slammed him. Look up that clip. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you get a little help in the body slam. 
it's not easy. It's the same way when Jade Cargo eliminated Nia Jax the Royal Rumble and the way she just lifted her up in a fireman's carry in the beginning and slammed her back down. The other, the, the, the body, the pickup to eliminate her was even more impressive. Because you know, be able to do what she did takes a lot. That took a lot of strength, a lot of power, a lot of leg power, because that's where it all came from. And Last Legends is another one too. And it was a, it was a tag team match. It was Metaphor uh, versus, I'm trying to think who it was. Fallon and Ren Sinclair, which uh, Sinclair is, a, is the new talent, I believe, that's there. She had a rookie match and didn't go so well, and and Henley has uh, been helping her out. So they've been teaming together. Henley helped her out a couple of times, a couple of weeks ago. Against uh, Chakra Jackson and, and Last Legend. But yeah, the, the NXT show was pretty good. You know, as as movement goes in two and a half months, will Braun Breaker be on the main roster? Will he be in NXT? Will he be a tag team champion, Baron Corbin? It's more of a wait and see, you know? I feel that NXT has to keep... You, ha, you know, as, you, as they're going to be moving to CW soon... You're going to need to mix it up a little bit. You're going to need to grow some of these guys, hold on to some of these guys and not move them to the main roster. Eventually move them to the main roster. I just feel that we all know in the back end what NXT is about. At the same time, we need to have, you know, faces that we're familiar with to attract to watch the show. I feel as good as they have, you know, Dragunov, Carmelo Hayes, Trick Williams, you have Dijak, you have Braun Breaker, again, my favorite. Baron, it's nice to see Baron Corbin because he's a recognizable guy. You know, he's gone through everything with the WWE in general. So it's nice to see that. You have Lexus King now. And the women's division, I mean, there's so much. You have the tag teams. You have, you know, Joe Gacy. I mean, there's there's so much. There's so much. You know, you have Roxanne Perez. You have Lola Vice now. Valkyra. Oh, you know, there's so many, you know, Lash Legend, Jakara Jackson. And then, of course, the men's again, you know, flipping back and forth. Axiom. Nathan, Fra- uh, Nathan Frazier. There's just a lot, a lot of talent. Uh, either you need to, you know, not develop them more, but as these pay-per-views keep on these premium live, I'm, I'm so used to saying pay-per-views, as the premium live events keep on going, you want to have something to attract, to have you watch it, you know, which is one of the things I think that Shawn Michaels said is, that, hey, you know what? I know they want to bring, bring Braun Breaker up but we still have things that we can do with him over here, which I agree. I agree highly on that. If I were them, as much as I would love him to move move to the main roster, let him get a new, you know, let him get a tag team title run with Baron Corbin. Once that's over with, then move him up. Or if they do win the tag team belts, move them both up for a briefly and see what happens. You know, let's say do a tag team title match against whoever. You know, Baron Corbin did drop the line and says, hey, there's no tag team in this world right now that can beat us. You know, we're, we're basically it. All right. If that's the case, give him the tag team belts. 
I feel like the tag team belts haven't been, you know, utilized or defended as much. You know, the Dusty Cup, of course, kind of distracted away from that a little bit. But it is time to kind of get back into that. Into, you know, putting them, you know, defending them either, you know, every other two weeks or whatever the case is. And it looks like, you know, between Raw and SmackDown, again, Raw and SmackDown have the unified belts. It would be nice to, you know, and I mentioned before, separate them already. Same way that they did it with the universal belt and the other belt. Judgment Day is not going back and forth like that. They're not active. It's it's like I said in the prior episode, it just seems like they're just a lost group up in the WWE. Like they don't know where they want to what direction they want to head with them between Finn Balor and Damian Priest. You have a guy with a money briefcase. Whenever he tries to use it, can't. And it just doesn't seem right to have a tag team champion fight for the heavyweight belt. I mean, I guess it could be done, but, you know, it just seems like they're kind of like lost. With Rhea, they're, you know, of course they know what they're going because she's the dominant one. And that's the reason why she is the leader or what many look at as the leader of the of the group. Uh, aside from that, you know, those are my opinions. And and by the way, I'm gonna give I'm gonna do a whole separate show again on this whole rock thing, Cody Rhodes thing. My opinion is not anti Cody. I need people to, when they hear it, to go and listen with an open mind and understand that at the end of the day, it is a business. I may repeat some of the things I've said before. In the end, I'm thinking as it of it as a business. I don't think anything bad comes out of it. Everybody wins. Every gets a piece of the pie. Of course, some will walk away a little bit more. In the end, it's still uh, just important to understand that. You know, that will be hopefully the next show. I'm looking forward to Stand and Deliver. I hope they put up a good show. They need to because they're going to be the first show going up on that weekend. Well, you know. That's Saturday. They're doing an early show at 1130, I think it is, they start. And, you know, I think that's going to be great. I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best to see if I can make it to those events. I would love to see NXT because I know that every show that I've seen, there's always something great that comes out of it. And it says a lot about the young talent that they have. You know, how they started, how far they come along. And I just, you know, if anybody hears this from the uh, WWE at any point, I've been watching wrestling for a long time, a long time. There was a moment I did stop, but it wasn't because I didn't like the product. It just was life caught on and I was dealing with bigger things. Now that I have a little time, you know, have an avenue to express my opinions, what I think. Just to hear me out. You know, listen to what I'm saying. Not always what the, uh, and we're, you know, we're, I'm in this business, nobody's ever happy 100% with what the results are. We choose sides, we cheer for who we cheer, and that's it. Some of the times we'll be like, oh, that sucked, you know? And other times it's like, oh, that's great. That was amazing. Uh, I just feel like NXT needs a little bit more talent. Like I want to see, you know, at the end to kind of fast forward a little bit again and kind of go back you know, as I jump around. Carmelo Hayes did attack Dragunov. I'm wondering if they're going to have him win the belt and then have Trick come back and be the one who challenges him and gets that that win win it's only a matter of time before Carmelo goes also he's kind of had that taste of the main roster 
has had a couple of wins, actually. We don't, you know, again, we don't track wins and losses in WWE, but when you go into the main roster and you get a couple of wins coming straight out of NXT, that's a great thing. You know, that means that the sky's the limit for you and you are soon going to be a part of it. I think that he should be the one that goes up next. But again, we still need, you know, characters, familiar faces, ones that we've kind of grown with in that brand. They own their, they are their own separate brand. They should not be beneath Raw or SmackDown. They should be remain as equal. And with the way the TV deals that they're doing, it's going to be important to have someone that is beyond recognizable, known, and, you know, at the end of the day, brings, you know, asses to the seats. Because that's what matters to them. Whether it's small arenas, whatever. People will watch if they know that they're going to enjoy the product, so that's very important. So yeah, in a couple minutes, I'll end it. If you guys have any comments, feedback, let me know. Again, that's my take on the uh, the NXT. And I'm sure I've, there's a whole bunch of stuff I missed, but I'll just try to go over it. And I'll, re- and I'll we'll repeat again. It was a much better show than last night. I felt like last night's show just had so many questions that were not answered. And I feel like the press conference, and this this is speaking about Raw, I feel like the press conference on Thursday will say a lot of where we're headed with this big event. It's going to be a crazy weekend. I'm hoping that overall in the weekend that, uh, Things will unfold. I hope I'm making a trip out there. I don't really go to that many live events as I used to. One due to work and so on and so forth. But that weekend I already started taking days off in case I'm able to make it out there. And I hope I can and I plan on it. And, uh, you know, I hope they start putting together, hey, what match is going to happen on night one and night two so I could really know where I'm going to go for and hopefully attend the NXT event because I really would like to go. Uh, Appreciate the feedback. Appreciate everybody who listens. You know, I still try to get a little organized with the show. So I apologize if I go back and forth and jump from one point to the other. It's just whatever comes to my mind at that moment. I want to talk about it. That way I don't forget later on. That's more of an organizational thing. Aside from that, remember, always remember, it's my opinion. You have the right to yours, my thoughts, my perspective, my way of looking into it and understanding it. In the end of the day, it's like a movie. We either like the beginning, the middle, the end. Either the movie completely sucked or the movie was great. The actors are great. Script changes happen sometimes on set. We have to treat this the same way. And that's kind of like leading to what I'll be talking about this whole Rock Cody situation again. I don't know if I should wait because Thursday... A lot of things will be answered. And I hope at least in the press conference, we men and women are grown and don't take it so personal about what's happened. It's already happened. And just ask questions that are basically, you know, stick with it. Stick with what they're doing. No matter what we say, it's not going to change. We already kind of know that. So, I don't know. That's just me. There's bigger things out there. I hope you guys enjoy. 
I'll see you guys. And uh, follow up, listen, feedback. And I appreciate you guys. And thank you for listening to the Not So Creative Podcast. Podcast.